I've been HIV positive for 18 years. My boyfriend at the time was positive. Um, there wasn't a lot of education back then. We were IV drug users, a um, bit out of control at the time, so I did things I probably wouldn't have done if I wasn't on drugs. Um, I began getting heart palpitations and really short of breath, climbing upstairs and um, walking a block, even in the littlest bit of exertion, even getting dressed in the morning, my heart would start pounding. Um, I knew something was wrong and I was diagnosed eight years ago with pulmonary hypertension, so I had HIV for 10 years. After my initial diagnosis, the place that, uh, the clinic that I was sent to, they gave me appointments for tests and to see the doctor eight months later. And I was really sick. And I was not going to wait eight, eight months. I really didn't think I was gonna be alive the next month, let alone eight months later. So, you know, I, luckily, I had the skills from HIV, from my work in HIV, to advocate for myself, to, you know, get myself the right medication that I needed, the right doctor, um, to get my medication paid for, that was also a problem. So HIV is human immunodeficiency virus. It is a virus that infects people and over time destroys or diminishes their immune system such that they are susceptible to infections that people with a normal immune system would not get. Um, where it actually came from uh, is somewhat arguable, but it is passed either through blood, mostly, or through sex. Most people who get pulmonary arterial hypertension associated with HIV have been infected for a long period of time, usually eight to 10 years or longer. So that seems to be the biggest factor in the development of that complication. Now, interestingly enough, if you look, that has a huge import nowadays because if you get HIV infected, let's say today, and you take your antiretrovirals, your median survival now is 19, 20 years. So it's truly a chronic disease. So if the thing that's important as far as developing PAH is how long you've been infected, most people will survive long enough to be at least at risk. And so if that's one in 200, and there's, last guess, what, 30 to 40 million people in the world infected with HIV, that's potentially a huge number of patients who will or could develop PAH, especially if they are hep C or hep B uh, co-infected, if they are or have been IV drug abusers, if they've done cocaine or if they've done meth, that's very high risk. Plus, if they've been HIV infected for a relatively long period of time, those are the people who are really at high risk. And, you know, they probably should be taught or at least informed that if they develop symptoms that are consistent with PAH, like shortness of breath, uh, swelling in their legs or their belly, um, things like that, that they need to either seek their healthcare professional or bother the one they already have and bring it up as, as, a, you know, as a potential issue. It's clear now that people with PAH associated with HIV who get treated do exceptionally well. We tell people around that refer the HIV people into us is really if you have somebody who's HIV infected and they're short of breath or they're persistently complaining that they're dyspneic or short of breath and you can't find a reason, an obvious reason, then you need to think that they have PAH. It's really difficult living with one life-threatening illness. Living with two is extremely hard, but it doesn't have to be, you know, it. You know, life is probably going to change. It's going to be different. You're not going to be able to do the same things that you did before. Um, you're not going to be able to do all the things that you want to do. But that's okay because you can do other things and you can change your life to revolve around your needs and your diseases. Um, you know, find an HIV doctor who knows about pH. Find a pH doctor who knows about HIV or at least is willing to learn. And if you can't do that, find 
um, a university or a large hospital where everything's under one roof where all your doctors are there and they communicate and work together. So if you're, you know, your pH doctor gives you new medication, your HIV doctor knows about it. If your HIV doctor finds something, your pH doctor knows about it. It's really, really important. And you know your body. You know when something's wrong. Listen to what your body's telling you and tell your doctor, talk to them about it. And if they don't do anything, um, tell them more. And if they still don't do anything, fire them. Find a new doctor. You wouldn't, you wouldn't go back to a mechanic who's telling you there's nothing wrong with your car when you hear your engine banging. You know, you're, you're much more important than a car.